She's more than just a pretty face with a sophisticated voice to match. Apparently one of black cinema's favorite it girls and Hollywood's favorite token is also a real life bully. Probably why she played those typecasted characters so well. Sharing her mean girl past with the world didn't come easy for Gabrielle Union, who disclosed her once bullying ways in her 2017 book, We're Going to Need More Wine, where she discusses an array of serious topics that include assault and even star actress Ryan Destiny, whom Gab boldly calls out of her name. Although her days of gossiping with the girls about other girls seem to have worked in her favor for a while, getting the upper hand in certain situations. Deep, deep down, Gabrielle's life was anything but the picture-perfect role she'd been portraying. I know, I know. Tell us something we don't know. Gabrielle Union's yesteryears of being known as one of the mean girls of Hollywood is anything but new. We've heard countless stories and read article after article about Gabrielle's certain urge to bully the next pretty girl she sees, and how even pre-fame Gab hadn't been the kindest person to be around. Some seem to think all those roles portraying the too hot to handle popular chick were played a little too well. And well, now we know why. Revealing on several occasions, one being during a sit-down interview with Oprah, along with fellow actresses Felicia Rashad, Viola Davis, and Alfre Woodard for their Black Women in Hollywood segment. With scarcity comes desperation, and in the wonderful world of Hollyweird, a lack of the Black seemed to have been a contributing factor in Gabby's not-so-welcoming ways. During a time where you think those reaching, in this case auditioning for scraps, would look out for one another, Gabrielle was not about to let the so-called sisterhood get in the way of her getting the role she'd strive for. Despite the lack of thorough detail, we can assume based off of the incident she did discuss and how they may have possibly led to her Regina George era. Growing up in the Bay Area of Pleasanton, Gabrielle faced trials and tribulations like the rest of them, her trials stemming more so unfortunately due to the color of her skin. Going to a predominantly white grade school, she did everything she could to assimilate, even if that meant avoiding other black kids like the plague out of fear of being ostracized as well. When a group of white Latinos moved next to her area, Gabrielle not only tried her best to fit in with her white peers, but the Latinos obviously wanted to be down and not with the brown as well, even though they were technically brown themselves. Whilst in the cafeteria line making the difficult decision between mozzarella sticks or PB&J, an impatient Latino boy who had been behind Gab wanted to skip her in line. He learned real quick that wasn't about to happen, and in retaliation, he hit Gabrielle with the ultimate slur. This would be the first time in Gabrielle's life that she'd experience being called the N-word, and we ain't talking about nice. As she navigated school, this mechanism of dodging and bullying other colored girls continued even after her school days were over. Originally, her vision had been set on becoming the next Kim Kardashian. Studying for bar exams with the hopes of becoming a legitimate lawyer over at UCLA. While attending to her studies, however, she thought it'd be a great idea to get an internship over at an LA modeling agency. After an agent approached and asked if she'd be interested in modeling, Gab was taken aback to say the least, not because she thought she couldn't do it, but because she'd set her path in a direction of law. Nevertheless, she was ecstatic and had been officially signed to the agency in no time. Bring It On would be her first huge breakout role, portraying the character of cheer boss Isis of the East Compton Clovers. This would be her first and last role where she'd be able to have complete control of the character's persona and dialogue. Although Isis along with her clique were more than in the right, she was still portrayed as the popular mean girl. 
Gabrielle's roles in Sister Sister, Seventh Heaven, and more followed this persona formula, sealing Gabrielle's position within Hollywood. Now deemed the pretty it girl and a force to be reckoned with, everyone at the time knew what was up, including Jada Pinkett Smith, who had issues with Gabrielle that wildly last for almost two decades. Back when Red Table Talk, Jada's Facebook watch series became infamous due to all of her confessions concerning Will and all of their marital troubles, RTT was on the rise back in 2018 and quickly became a fan fave amongst viewers. One episode caught everybody's attention when Gabrielle Union had been invited on as a guest to talk about her and Jada's so-called feud that had been going on since Jaden and Willow were still in diapers. The girls were fighting. Unbeknownst to you and I, but what exactly for? Well, we don't know and neither do they. Once Jada hit up Gabrielle's line with hopes of squashing their so-called beef, the two didn't seem to remember what it was exactly they had been fighting about for all this time. They both agree that tension was felt between the two whenever they crossed paths. According to Jada, it was nothing more than two young divas with way too much pride and ego. When asked about the non-feud, feud later on during an interview on the Today Show, Gabrielle insists on it all being one huge blown out of proportion spectacle speculated by no other than the media. Neither of us actually knows what originally took place back then, but the people we had around us were like, well, you know how she feels about you. And they were like, well, you know how she feels about you. And it was like, girl, bye for 17 years. Even though we're both very outspoken women, both activists, our husbands are friends, I worked with her husband, we both had too much pride and too much insecurities to just say, hey, did that ever actually happen or was that just a creation of someone who didn't want to see two women rise together? When confiding about her mean girl history, Gabrielle said it was fellow actress and life coach AJ Johnson, aka Jody's mom from Baby Boy, who mentored and rid her from her hateful, jealous spirit. After trash talking someone from afar at a party, AJ pulled Gabrielle to the side and asked her if her life had changed from belittling someone else. Did you get the guy? Did you get the job? Is your house any bigger? Did money get put in your pocket? Like clockwork, these questions turned into a viral internet meme. Nevertheless, it gave Gabrielle a lot to think about. She'd go on different platforms and stages, sharing to the public her previous trifling ways and even came out with a book, We're Going to Need More Wine, in 2017. Being self-aware is great and all, but maybe there is such a thing as being a little too transparent. Needless to say, people were not here for Miss Gabby dragging fellow actress Ryan Destiny in her new book. Writing about the time she and Ryan met at a pre-Oscar cocktail party, Ryan came up to Gabrielle excitedly expressing how huge of a fan she had been of the Being Mary Jane star. This was back during the time Ryan was an up and coming rising star, deemed the next Gabrielle Union on Fox's musical series, Star. Gabrielle made sure to put on her best face when the cameras got a hold of the link up. They couldn't wait to snap it up for the blogs would appear to be a sweet moment between veteran and newcomer on the outside was anything but on the inside for Gabrielle. This is what she had to say about Miss Rye in the excerpt. I had heard that she looked like me. I saw her in person and she looks like I literally gave birth to her. Gab 2.0, only better. Oh my God, she said. I am finally meeting you. This is so amazing. I ask, what are you, 12? Rye responds, 22. I admire you so much. She said, if you could mentor me, <laughs> F you, I thought. You want me to mentor you? The press is literally calling you the next Gabrielle Union, except she can sing and dance. I smiled and the photographers came over. They needed to document this moment of look who's old and infer it because I have a reputation for never aging. So 
What did Ryan have to say about Gabby's little comment? She wasn't expecting to see her name in Gabrielle's book. When they had originally met, according to Ryan, Gabrielle was more than kind and never would have known she'd been thinking about that at the time. Later, chopping things up via phone conversation whilst filming, Ryan credits Gabby for getting her through mental challenges. They've also been snapped together since then. When it boils down to it, Gabrielle Union used to be a mean girl that hid behind a pretty face, drowning in low self-esteem, possibly due to years of being bullied herself. There is never a linear answer as to why someone may turn out to be a mean girl. At least with Gabrielle, her mean girl days seem to be well behind her. Advocating for social justice issues, speaking her truth, and uplifting women whenever and wherever seem to be more of what she's into nowadays. Do you think Gabrielle's mean girl days are long gone? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. And stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.